Hello and welcome to another What's Inside. This time we are looking at Bug House, the nuttiest card game ever. This is from 1965 from Lakeside Toys. Now it is technically not entirely a card game, it's just the way that the mechanics play. So you're actually building a house and this is from, like I said, from 1965, put out by Lakeside Toys, number 8315. And this copy is mostly complete. I have a good idea what's missing, so let's go over what is in here. Now the instructions, like usual with these old games, is inside the box lid. So you'll need that. It's a pretty straightforward game. You get five cards in your hand and you're trying to build the house and you can keep cards in your hand to keep others from playing but at detriment and risk to yourself so the boxes were pretty banged up the inside of this lid is actually really good but the outer area is really faded and heavily soiled from storage which is pretty common with these games are usually tossed in a closet and forgotten but we're going to look at the components next. There's a lot of little pieces, and for some reason the parts of the original sprue are in here. But let's look at the pieces and see what we've got. Okay, first up are the building frames, which is just a plastic base that you would put the walls in, and then the roof goes on top, obviously. But this is really old plastic it was cheap then, but it was also top of the line in a lot of ways. So the plastic, by today's standards, is junk plastic that you'd find at like the dollar store. Or actually probably worse than that. So these two tend to get very, very brittle over time. And it shows, because a lot of times these will be the pieces that are busted. Be these and some of the other small parts, but these... Are going to be real difficult to replace because they are specifically designed for this game so be aware of that you should have four of them they'll all look the same same color everything there might be other colors out i've never seen any other than green but i'm not ruling out the possibility that they may have mixed a different color in at some point that was fairly common and those tend to be the outliers so you should have four of those one for each player because it's a two to four player game so that's those. Next up we have the chimneys. Which these are the same type of plastic. And as you can see, this one's torn up a little bit. And I actually have one that is broken. These are real easy to break, especially as they age because of the type of plastic it is. So it gets uh, stepped on or a dog gets to it or something. I think somebody's dog got to this one. But it's really easy to break. You can re-glue them if you have all the pieces. I'm missing part of a wall for this one. But there should be four of these as well. And again, these will be specific to this set. So they might be pretty hard to replace if you're tr a completionist and you're trying to get the whole game. So be aware, you, have to, you may have to buy one or two sets of this to get a complete one if... You look around, I'm sure it'll turn up. This is a fairly hard to find game. I see them on eBay occasionally. But it plays a lot like Cootie, except with cards instead of dice. At least to me. Next up, we have the saws. Let's see if I can. It's got a little serrated edge. It's not sharp or anything, it's just to mimic a little hacksaw. There are four of those. Next up we have hammers. And as you can see these are really small. You should have four of these. I've only got three, unfortunately. Give you an indication as to how big these are. It's about an inch and a half. So they're not really huge things. Next up we have trowels. And you should also have four of these. This glossy black plastic, the handles on here might get broken, but they don't show up too great because of the softbox I've got lighting and everything. But these might be broken. The hammers tend to hold up a little better, and so do the saws, but these have a th that thin 
piece between the handle and the actual trowel that probably will snap so I'm lucky that these aren't busted there are also these little cardboard pieces that kind of help hold things together I've only got three of them I'm not entirely sure how many are supposed to be here but I think only four so that just kind of helps clip things together next we'll get to the actual wall pieces all right so here's a window piece you can see it's approximately three inches tall by two inches base and it is peaked so then there's this one these are all different as you can tell And I think I might be missing one of the white ones, but I'm not sure because there are usually door pieces. What are they called? End wall with doors. And then there's just end walls. So I think this is actually a door piece and this is an end wall piece, but I'm not 100% on that. So I think all of them are here. They just don't all match see because this one doesn't have a door and this one does so this is probably a door piece because the other ones are door pieces and this looks like an end wall so here's some more doors yeah mr. beetle mr. moth we already saw mr. B and whatever that guy's supposed to be The other side of these are just blank, so there's nothing really specific to these. These are actually pretty decent cardstock for the time, but usage and the age of them has really done a number on them. These are actually in pretty good shape. Some of them are crumpled up. It's one of the downsides of storing them with jagged pieces. Next up we have the walls. And again, these are about three and a half inches long, about two inches high. I think I have all these. There should be eight of them. Yeah, I've got them all. And notice how some of them have windows. That's generally important in this type of game. Let's see if the cards reflect that. Yeah, sidewall and sidewall with windows. So this is a sidewall, and this one's got a window in it, so you'll know which piece you're supposed to grab and there's you know they're all unique looking I think the art's pretty solid and like I said for the time these were actually pretty nice cardstock pieces but it's got this cool 60s art it's really retro cool And the last one. Alright, so this is our first roof. There are only four of them because there's only four houses. And then we have a bee putting on his uh, fake brick. So these have held up pretty well. Of course, there's a seam right down the middle, so you want to make sure these are all in one piece, of course. And you'll be able to see the underside there where the crease is. Here's the last one. Now let's take a look at the cards. Okay, and as you can see, the back of the card's pretty fun. Same style of art. So let's take a look at what we've got. It's a pretty healthy stack of cards here. 
I'm actually missing a couple cards, but we have representations of all of them, so you'll be able to see what they look like at least. So let's start with the end wall. There's five of those. As you can see, this one got really gnarled up, drifting around in the box, running into other pieces. So, yeah, be aware of that, because you want to make sure the cards are at least here. And we've got five of those. And we've got the end wall with door. There's five of those. Next up we have the side wall with window. And there's those five. Next we have the side wall. And there's five of those. So unlike most cards, you can see these are a little over three inches. About three and a half. By about two and a half. So pretty standard game card size. Nothing particularly interesting or unique about them that you have to worry about. Sand and cement is next. There's five of those. Then we have the chimney. There's five of those. Then we have the roof. And there's five of those. As you can see, the soiling and wear works with the cards too. Our next card is the hammer and saw. And we have five of that. Oh, six. We have six of those. I think we have six of them because there's two different things on here and you could probably only get one at a time because I know you reshuffle the deck to keep going so you, that's not a strategy to and there's uh, since there's two things on here you, and you can only hold five cards it stands to reason they'd have an extra one in there next up we have the trowel Now this is one of the cards I am missing. So I only have four of them, there should be five. And then we have Clear Weather, Resume Play. There's two of those. And we have those because there are disaster cards, like the tornado where you lose a wall. And there are two of those. Then there's also the stormy weather card, which results in losing two turns. And there are two of that one as well. And lastly, there's building inspection, lose one turn. There's supposed to be two of those, I only have one. So be aware of that, that's the cards. The cards have held up remarkably well considering the uh, usage they've seen over the years. Because this game's obviously been played, but they're pretty nice cardstock. I'm actually pretty impressed with that. So that is what is inside Bug House, the nuttiest card game ever. Like I said, it reminds me of Cootie. And considering the age of this game, I think it's held up pretty well. The plastic is really cheap. 
by today's standards, but it was pretty top of the line back then, or at least mid-range for a board game. So it, most board games that used plastic used this same type of plastic, and it brittles over time really, really badly. So be aware of that. You want to make sure all the components are there, of course, and the cards. Now you know what to look for. I think this game's actually pretty fun. I haven't played it in probably 20 years, but I do remember that it is a fairly fun game, and kids tend to like it. So if you can find a copy and you're a big vintage board game fan, I think you'll like it. It's pretty simple, but it's got that cool retro art style, and there's a lot of things about it to like, and it's a game that a lot of people haven't heard of. So this is the 1965 Lakeside Toys version of Bug House. Definitely worth tracking down if you're a vintage board gamer. So we've seen what's in the box, you've heard my take on it. I think it's actually pretty good quality considering its age. And like I said, I, I would recommend this one if you like these old type of games. But that's going to do it for this one. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. If you'd like to help the channel, share the video out. Or if you want to make a donation, you can pick yourself up something from the Teespring store. Check the links in the description for my Streamlabs for one-time donations and my Patreon for monthly donations. And just sharing its appreciation enough, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe as well. Anything you can do to help the channel grow is greatly appreciated. And as always, we hope to see you on the next one.